alligator gar populations have declined throughout their range, except in coastal Louisiana, where they are commonly found and are a sentinel species in our coastal marshes. Alligator gar normally spawn in, in newly flooded vegetation, and historic spawning areas have been modified due to levee construction. This reduction in spawning habitat has resulted in a decrease in uh, the reproductive output of alligator gar, resulting in a smaller population size. Therefore, efforts exist to, to produce alligator gar and hatcheries to supplement some populations in these disturbed areas. Now, our coastal marshes provide abundant spawning habitat for alligator gar. However, uh, previous studies have indicated that yolk sac alligator gar cannot withstand salinities much above seven parts per thousand. Therefore, saltwater intrusion and coastal land loss may be detrimental to the robust Louisiana coastal population in the future. Previous work has also indicated that alligator gar have one of the highest recorded tolerances of ammonia toxicity. Um, toxicity. In an aquaculture setting, um, ammonia is a, is a main concern because it is toxic to fish. So fish are reared at high densities and they're, and they're fed high protein diets, which can result in higher levels of ammonia in the water than in natural systems. So my research question is why do alligator gar have this high tolerance to ammonia? The high levels of ammonia that alligator gar can tolerate are almost never present in natural systems. Therefore, if this tolerance is a product of natural selection, then alligator gar must be exposed to high levels of ammonia at some point in their life history. Well, my hypothesis is that during early development, before hatching, ammonia increases inside of the egg, exposing the embryonic alligator gar to high levels of ammonia. So here on campus, we actually spawn spotted gar, and um, these we induce wild caught gar to spawn them. So these act as a great surrogate for alligator gar species because they're smaller, they're easier to rear in a laboratory setting. So I measure the ammonia concentration in the incubation water at different stages of early development. I do this to determine if ammonia is expelled out of the out of the egg prior to hatching, because. I expect to see, as the embryos hatch, that there's this large release of ammonia, so I expect to see ammonia to increase at the hatch. So my project will determine if alligator gar are exposed to high concentrations of ammonia, and if this tolerance of a species is influenced by the level of ammonia they're exposed to as embryos. Thank you.